Hello, saints, peace, love, and grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day today. We finished our study in the book of Acts, 28 chapters revealing over 30 plus years of the Apostle Paul's ministry from 34 AD all the way up to 66 AD. And hopefully, for those of you who've been following the, who followed the complete study of the book of Acts, you came to realize that the book of Acts is the very foundation of who we are today and we saw the transition from Israel's kingdom gospel preached by Peter the other 11 apostles and the little flock over to Paul's mystery gospel to and for the body of Christ today understanding this transition is essential if we're ever gonna understand when the body of Christ began who we are today and where we're gonna go in the future so We've seen an overview of sorts of Paul's ministry in the book of Acts, and now it's time to get into the specifics. Now, during Paul's 30-year ministry, Paul wrote 13 books from Galatians all the way to 2 Timothy, or in the order that you have them in your King James Version Bibles, Paul's books are Romans through Philemon. So why Galatians? Why Galatians, you might be wondering. Why? Well, I chose Galatians. Better yet, why did God prompt me to make Galatians the next study following our study in the book of Acts? Well, along with some prayer and prompting of the Spirit, the book of Galatians only makes sense. Paul wrote Galatians very early on in his ministry. In fact, it's my personal opinion that Galatians was written first. And there is some debate as to the order of books written by Paul. Some say Galatians was written after Thessalonians. Some say it was written uh, right after or before Second Thessalonians. In looking at Paul's style of writing when he wrote the other books, Paul always visited an area first. Then he wrote them a letter after leaving, except for Romans. We know that Paul wrote the book of Romans just prior to visiting them or being taken prisoner to Rome. And if you recall from our study on Acts, Paul's first journey was through Galatia. He visited Galatia long before he went to Thessalonica. So it's my personal opinion that Paul wrote to the Galatians after visiting them. And most likely he wrote to the Galatians somewhere late in his first journey or early in his second journey around 48-49 AD. Even as late as 50 AD, 14 to 16 years after he was chosen to be an apostle by Christ Jesus our Lord God. To review Paul's experience quickly, Paul was a zealous Pharisee, law-minded. He was all about the Mosaic law system. He hated Jesus and he hated anyone who believed in Jesus. What really angered Paul, however, was to see his kinsmen, the Jews, Israel, turning to, in belief to Jesus Christ as their Messiah. In fact, Paul was responsible for imprisoning and killing many of the little flock. And we know that the little flock were all believing Jews. Paul even blasphemed the Holy Spirit when he helped to kill the prophet Stephen, Israel's third and final chance to usher in the earthly kingdom. Israel was given three chances to fulfill their promised covenant of the earthly kingdom, the kingdom of heaven on earth. First, they cheated on God, the Father, with other gods, their first big mistake. Then, they killed the Son, Jesus, who is God manifested in the flesh, their second big mistake. Then, finally, they blew their third chance when they denied and blasphemed the Holy Ghost when they killed their prophet Stephen in 34 AD. Their final fatal mistake prompting God to turn away from Israel and turning him to the Gentiles instead so we saw Paul at the stoning of Stephen then afterwards Paul asked permission from the Sanhedrin to hunt down anyone who believed in Jesus and he knew there was a group of believers that fled Jerusalem to hide out in Damascus because of the persecution so Paul was full of zeal full of anger full of revenge and he heads to Damascus to find the little flock to bring them back to Jerusalem to be thrown in jail and killed. However, God had other plans for Paul. We know on the way to Damascus, Paul is confronted 
by Christ Jesus, God manifested in the flesh. And Paul is physically blinded by the brightness of our Lord, and instantly Paul became a believer in Jesus Christ. He's led by the hand to Damascus, he's healed from his blindness, and he's given a new mission in life, one to preach to the Gentiles. The mystery hitting God since the foundation of the world, the creation of what's known as the body of Christ. Paul explains the details of what our Lord Jesus revealed to him in the book of Ephesians. In Ephesians 3 verse 1, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, were, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, we're only given a glimpse of what Paul learns on his way to Damascus. Paul writes that after his experience in Damascus, he went to Arabia for a few years. Then he returned back to Damascus. Then he went to Jerusalem to tell the Jewish believers, the little flock, about his newfound transformation in Christ Jesus. And we know from reading the book of Acts that Paul isn't well received in Jerusalem. So Paul headed north. In fact, Paul went back to his hometown where he was born, the Roman Gentile city of Tarsus. It's here that Paul would launch his ministry to the Gentiles. Paul spends over 10 years in Tarsus preaching the gospel of grace to the Romans. And after these 10 years transpire, Paul is called to travel south to Antioch, then down to Jerusalem with Barnabas. Then Paul began his journeys around the entire region of Galatia, Asia, Thessalonica, Macedonia, Greece, and many more areas. And these journeys would take Paul over 30 plus years to complete. Also, we know Paul's style of ministry or his plan of attack, if you will, from our last study on the book of Acts, that Paul would find the synagogues, he would reason with his kinsmen, the Jews, showing them scriptures and prophecies that directly pointed to Jesus Christ being their Messiah. And if and when the Jews would believe that Jesus was in fact their Messiah, Paul would then move on to explain that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again, the gospel of grace. If they believed everything Paul revealed to them, they were then sealed by the Holy Spirit. They were baptized into the Holy Spirit and added to the body of Christ. Also, while this is all taking place, Paul preaching to the Jews in the synagogues, we know that Gentiles also attended these synagogues, and they also heard Paul's preaching, and many were added to the body of Christ simultaneously. The body of Christ contained Gentiles and Jews at the same time. So Paul's mission was to the Gentiles, as we learn from what Jesus said to Paul, that he would send Paul to the heathen, the Gentiles. But Paul, being Jewish, loved his kinsmen and wanted Israel to be saved. So in Acts 13, we see Paul going to both Jews and Gentiles at the same time, building a body of believers, a body of Christ, while traveling all over the Middle East, all over Asia. And it's clear when you rightly divide the book of Acts, 
we see Paul going to the Gentiles at the very beginning of his ministry, especially during those 10 years that he spent in Tarsus. He preached to the Romans and the Jews. This is a Roman Gentile city. I hope everyone understood that clearly in our study on the book of Acts. Take a look at Acts 13 to refresh your memories on Paul's early ministry. Now, continuing on. So in this Galatians study, we're going to start at the beginning of Paul's ministry. His first major journey was to Galatia. The book of Galatians tells us all about the type of people Paul dealt with in that region. And the Galatians being composed of mostly Jews and many Gentiles who fled Jerusalem during the persecution were very zealous, uh, very law-minded Jews who hated Paul and his message. The Galatians followed Paul throughout his ministry and they even tried to kill Paul many times. They, they were the instrumental group of people who eventually put Paul into Roman prison. Now if you recall from our study on Acts, I made a profound statement regarding the Jews versus Gentiles. I said the majority of Paul's problems came not from the Gentiles, but came from the believing kingdom Jews, the little flock who Jesus made Peter the shepherd of, along with the other 11 apostles. When Paul didn't have any problems or, you know, with the Gentiles, they all loved Paul and they were getting saved. However, the Jews, we read in the book of Romans, that God had partially blinded them having their hearts hardened and calloused. They hated Paul. They couldn't understand Paul. And they saw Paul's gospel as an apostasy, something evil and an abomination. They wanted Paul dead, and they wanted the gospel that Paul preached to disappear. It's important to understand also that it wasn't just unbelieving Jews who hated Paul, but believing Jews, the faith plus works Jews, those in Peter's kingdom program. Recall that the council at Jerusalem was to try to make a peace agreement of sorts between Peter's little flock and Paul's body of Christ believers. The kingdom saints wanted to force the Gentiles to follow the Mosaic laws, circumcision, the Sabbath laws, and so on. And they finally reached an agreement that the Gentiles would not have to follow the Jewish laws, but would have to abstain from fornication and blood consumed from strangled animals and so on but I'm sure you recall the agreement they came up with concerning the Gentile believers remember also toward the end of Paul's ministry he finds his way to Jerusalem and the Jews attack Paul eventually getting Paul arrested these Jews if you recall are the same Jews that James said were all zealous of the law thousands upon thousands were believing Jews who also practice works the law fruit the oil this is the kingdom program for Israel Peter's program the little flock but because Paul was preaching faith without the law faith without works these Jews hated Paul and wanted him done away with murdered killed gone it all makes biblical sense when you consider what the book of Acts is all about the diminishing of the kingdom gospel and the domination of the grace gospel from prophecy to mystery the kingdom gospel was started by Jesus uh, believers being called the little flock and ended with the death of the generation at the time then Paul's mystery gospel took over and has lasted over 2,000 years now does that mean the kingdom gospel isn't being preached today absolutely not there are many people who don't rightly divide even today okay they're stuck in the kingdom gospel they go around uh, preaching and, and yelling and screaming and teaching to confess your sins not understanding what the word repent means they say be water baptized even to keep the Sabbath day to keep the feast days and so on that's the kingdom gospel and makes make no mistake about it those people are heading straight into Daniel's 70th week where they will be forced to follow the gospel with Israel over them in the kingdom program so the book of Acts shows us the transition from the kingdom to grace Paul's gospel the book of Galatians will show us the confusion of the kingdom saints versus the body of Christ how the kingdom gospel was confusing Paul's believers and, and turning them back into the kingdom saints instead of saints in the body of Christ. 
the kingdom saints were ignoring the agreement made at the Jerusalem Council and then were forcing the Gentiles back under the bondage of laws. And once Paul leaves the region of Galatia, after he establishes little groups of believers in the body of Christ, they're attacked by the little flock and other Jews, the kingdom saints. Galatians is all about this conflict between one dispensation versus another dispensation and Paul writes to them to address this battle. Now keep in mind, there was no King James Version Bible back then. They all relied on believers who had the gift of prophecy. The Holy Spirit speaking directly through believers to deliver God's message to them. So it was difficult for the body of Christ back then. They didn't have the word to read every day like we do. They were easily attacked. They were easily confused. Uh, you know, when Paul, their shepherd, was away, they were an easy target for the enemy like sheep without a shepherd that's what that's when the wolves come in to attack however now we have the king james version bible and we have the book of galatians to learn from we'll see in our study on galatians that the faith plus works kingdom program didn't completely fall away it's still being practiced even today and i see people everywhere being swept away because they're not well grounded they don't understand right dispensation uh, right division they have no knowledge of dispensations they have no foundation again they don't rightly divide god's word and they're an easy target for the enemy without a good foundation built on right division people are led to believe in false doctrines they're led to believe uh, for example post-tribulation rapture worshiping on the sabbath giving 10 percent of their money to the preacher abstaining from certain foods and on and on and on all because they don't rightly divide god's word they're easily led back under bondage and they have absolutely no security in their salvation in christ jesus because they're led into a works based salvation which they cannot keep they fail time and time again and that destroys their happiness and comfort and security and salvation it's a big mess so and that's exactly what the enemy wants so in closing, I look forward to our next study, the six chapters of the book of Galatians and one of Paul's first books, if not the first book, that Paul writes to address the conflict between the law-minded Jews versus the grace-minded believers of the body of Christ. So join me as we begin our study in the book of Galatians, Rightly Divided, and please keep this ministry in your prayers. Specifically, if you don't mind, let your prayers be that many seeds will be planted among the fields of the lost, uh, in the world and also that much edification will take place among the saints in the body of Christ until we start Galatians chapter 1 peace grace and love of Christ Jesus be with all of you Lord willing I'll see you soon as we begin our study